welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel. So let's continue. Uh, hopefully all of you guys watched my previous video where on, in the previous video, I teach you guys about the basic of how to differentiate. And today we will focus on the product rules and the quotient rules. If you haven't watched my previous video, I'll put the link on top. This corner, I guess. Okay, I think so. So I'll put that. You guys remember to watch that before you guys watch this one. So you guys will have a better understanding of how to differentiate. Okay. So today, what I'm going to teach you guys. Okay. I want to teach you guys product rules and quotient rules. Then a lot of students, they, they don't understand when they're going to use that formula. So now let me tell you. Okay. So based on what I taught you in the previous video, I think all of you guys know that every time you guys want to differentiate, right? The very important thing is you guys are going to look at the unknowns. And normally the unknowns is X, correct? So I think no one ever tell you they can actually differentiate in this mind map concept because my teacher never teach me this. Then when I understand myself, I realize mm, this mind map can help you to understand better. So you guys listen to me first, okay? So every single time, whenever you want to differentiate anything, you guys actually should look at the X because... Based on differentiation, we are times and minus one, right? We will look at the x, we will times, and then we will minus one, correct? Based on what I taught you in the previous video. Then, every time you want to differentiate, you should actually look at the equation of whatever you want to differentiate. See whether they have one x or more than one x. Now, we try to absorb first, okay? Whenever they, the whole equation only got one x, no need to think other method. They were just using the normal method to differentiate. What is normal method? Nah? The times and minus one. Can? Then, what if they have more than one x? If they have more than one x, that means they have two or three or stuff like that, you guys will see the relation between the x. If their relation is plus minus, you guys will use the normal method, which is what the previous video taught, okay? What I taught in the previous video, okay? And then, if they are times divide left, if they are times we're going to use product rule. How a product rule formula look like? It will look like this. Y equals to uv. dy dx equals to v du dx plus u dv dx. That is the formula for product rule. Then, if they are divide relation, we are not using product rule, but we are using quadrant rule. Quadrant rule formula will look like this. Y equals to U over V. DY DX equals to V DU DX minus U DV DX over V square. Do you understand what I say? Never mind. Let me explain better. So guys, I repeat again. Huh? Oh, oh, oh. Let, let, let. What happened? Okay, is it lag? Okay, better now. <laughs> so guys, uh, what I want to say? I forgot. Oh, I remember. So my dear, every single time you guys want to differentiate, right? You guys will base, actually we guys will base on how many x you guys have. So based on my previous video, you look at my example here. Do you guys realize that on the previous video, all this example, do you realize the one that I want to differentiate, all of them only got one x. Because they only have one x, that's why in the previous video, we just used the normal method to differentiate, which is times and minus one. Can you see that? Then what if they have more than one x? Nah? Look at this example. Ah. So do you guys realize this equation eight got two x? Lah. So when they got two x, based on what I taught you just now, you guys will see whether they are plus minus relation or times divide. So based on what I see now, they are plus relation. Based on this one, they are minus relation. So whenever they are plus minus, you guys will just use the normal method to differentiate. That's exactly what we did last video as well, correct? Then, how about this one? Do you guys realize these two? I got two x, okay? So these two x, but do you realize these two x is not plus minus relation? I'm inside the first bracket, you are inside the second bracket. Actually, we are times relation. So this one times relation, actually I should use the UV formula, the product rule, correct? But I didn't use the product rule in the last video is because I can expand it. And do you realize after I expand them, uh, these two x, their relation is not more, not plus minus anymore, but it will become a plus minus. So whenever they become plus minus, you guys again will use the normal method. So you look at d again, I repeat. Uh. So on the starting, you must always look how many x you guys have. Mm, I have two x. One on top, one at the bottom, isn't it? They are 
divide relation. So whenever they are plus minus, normal method. Whenever they are times, product rule. Whenever they are divide, quadrant rule. So now they are divide, isn't it? I should use the quadrant rule. But why again, last video, I didn't use quadrant rule? Because I can simplify it. And do you realize after I simplify, it become a plus minus relation. That's why we didn't use quadrant rule at all. Hopefully you guys get an idea of it. So this is very important for you guys to know. So every single time you want to differentiate, just look at how many x they have. They only have one x, normal method. More than one x, see their relation. Plus minus, normal method. Times divide using the formula. Not sure whether you understand what I say, but never mind. Let me give you the first example. So guys, look at this one. Uh. So question three, they say find dy dx for this one. So what will I do? Okay, first thing first, let me copy the questions here. Okay. So guys, on the starting, based on what I told you, every single time, whenever you want to differentiate, the first thing is, guess we'll see how many x they have. So the moment I look at it, I realize they have two x, correct? One is in the first bracket, one is in the second bracket. Do you realize they are times relation? So based on what I told you guys just now, times divide should use the formula, correct? Then, uh, not too sure, if you watch a lot of my video, you should know that I love to prove things, okay? Like, like want to impress you, something like that, okay? So my dear, the moment I look at this, okay, let's say I don't want to use the times divide formula. What other method I can use? Actually, I got an easier method. Why? Because quite obvious, these two brackets have no power. Since they have no power, actually, I can simplify it. I can make it more simple by open the bracket. 2x times x, 2x squared. Uh, 2x times x squared, 2x cubed. 2x times 2, 4x. Negative 5 times x squared, negative 5x squared. Negative 5 times 2, negative 10. So if I expand it, isn't it, it will look like this. And nothing for me to combine. And on this moment, do you guys realize just right after I expand it, mm, they all got 3x in total. And now in between these 3x, are they still times divide relation? No, they become a plus minus relation. Correct? So times divide must use the formula, but plus minus, do I need to use the formula? No. Plus minus, super easy one, can straight away start differentiate. So differentiate is times and minus one, okay? I already taught you in the previous video. So three times two, six, power minus one, two. This one, nothing here is one, yeah? One times four, four, power minus one, no more x. Two times five, ten, power minus one, one. How about this negative 10? Just in case you're having short-term memory. This negative 10 is that no x is always x power zero. And zero times anything is always zero. So isn't it just like that? I got the answer for dy dx. Can you guys see how easy they are? Correct? Now, let me show you another method. Why I need to show you another method? Because I want to prove to you another method also can get the same answer. So I repeat that. Uh, the moment I look at the same questions, on the starting, again, I see 2x, right? One in the first bracket, one in the second bracket. Isn't it their time relation? I know I can expand it and differentiate in the normal method. Let's say we pattern, we don't want to expand it. We want to use the formula because times actually should use the product rule. Let me co copy product rule formula for you guys. dy dx equals to v du dx plus u dv dx. So let's check whether we're using product rule. We can get back the same answer or not. Okay, let's get started there. So y, now you want to differentiate the y, we will call it dy dx. Okay, the red color is just a formula. Whatever my working is, is actually this part, okay? So actually very, very easy one. You will just, based on the formula, see whatever they needed, you just sub accordingly. Do you understand what I say? Let me show you. Uh. First one, based on my formula, I realize the first thing I should have is v. So which one is my v, my dear? So you look carefully, uh, based on the formula, I know they should call it y equals to uv. So y equals to uv, that means the front one is always the u, the back one is always the v. So now they say they want v. I will just copy down my v. So uv, uv, v is the blue color one that I highlighted. Isn't it x squared plus 2? That. Do you realize I just follow the formula? They say they need what? I just put in what? By the way, uh, this v and this du dx, nothing they write in between, that means they are time relation. So please put a bracket. Next one, I should start du dx. Huh? What is du dx, my dear? All of you know, why you differentiate it, you call it dy dx. So u, you differentiate it, you will call it du dx. So this du dx is differentiate the u. 
So which one is you, my dear? So U V U V U isn't it the front one? But now I want D U D X. So D U D X that means I should differentiate my U. My U is two X minus five. Can you see that? If I differentiate it, then what will I get? Nothing on top one year. One times two, two. Power minus one, no more x. And number differentiate is always zero. So isn't it du dx is two? Done again. Continue. Plus u. U v u v u. Isn't it the purple color one? Isn't it the purple color one? Exactly. It's just two x minus five. And then the next one is dv dx. Where do I get dv dx? Du dx differentiate u. Dv dx differentiate your v. V is actually the blue color one. Where should I write? I scared I will affect the next one. Never mind, I write here. Ah. V is only x squared plus 2. So if we differentiate it, what would we get? Nothing in front is a 1, yeah? 2 times 1, 2. Power minus 1 is 1x. One and number differentiate is always 0. Isn't it my dv dx is 2x? Again, done. Do you guys realize, uh, is it very hard to understand? I don't think so. Because eventually, you just need to know that whenever there are times or divide, you guys must use the formula. And you just need to follow the formula and sub accordingly. So when they need V, you sub V. When they want U, you sub U. Correct? U and V exactly is just copy from the original questions. And the U, the X, you guys must purposely differentiate whatever they want. And then you guys just need to sub accordingly. And right after I sub, isn't it this is what I get. So this is what I get, right? Now let's expand it and try to write my answer in the simplest form. 2 times x squared, 2x squared. 2 times 2, 4. 2x times 2x, 4x squared. 2x times negative 5 is mean negative 10x. For those I can combine, I combine them together, yeah? 2x squared plus 4x squared is 6x squared plus 4 minus 10x. Done. Most important is this moment. Do you guys realize I using this product rule, I get this answer. Or I just using expand method, also I get this answer. So do these two, I get back the same answer? Yes. So then is this formula work or not? Work. Yay. Isn't it done proving to you guys? Hopefully you guys understand. Let's look at B now, okay? So B, again, how do we do it? So the moment I look at B, I repeat, yeah? Every time you want to differentiate, okay? Because no one will tell you, oh, this one need to use UV formula. So you must realize yourself. How do you guys realize yourself? You must remember what I taught you. So the first thing first, you guys must see how many x they have. So on B, I look at it, I realize I got two x, correct? One in the first bracket, another one in the second bracket. Quite obvious, they are times relation, not plus minus. So don't tell me, teacher, can I using the first method? I don't think the first method works. Because the first method need to open the bracket and quite obvious, I couldn't expand the bracket because now my example come with the power of three and five, correct? So I have no choice. I can't use the first method. Then I will use the second method. So second method, that means I will use the UV formula. So let me write down again the formula for you guys. So V du dx plus U dv dx. So quite easy. All I need to do is just again sub accordingly. So why when we differentiate it, we will call it dy dx. So the first thing I need to put is V. So U, V, U, V, please remember, the front one is always the U. The back one is always the V. So now they say V. So I will copy the back one straight away down. 4 minus 3x power 5. So it. Next one, I must have D, U, D, X. Where do I get D, U, D, X? I will need to differentiate my U. So my U is actually the purple color one. Let me write down for you guys. U is actually x plus 3 cubed. Then what I need now is du dx. So how do I get du dx? I will just need to differentiate that. Uh, in the previous video, I already taught you guys how to differentiate with a bracket on. Okay, I hope you guys know all this basic. Nothing in front is 1. So 3 times 1, 3. The bracket just copy down. Power minus 1, 2. Please don't tell me you stop here. Whenever they come with a bracket, after you times, after you minus 1, please remember to Add on a small bracket at the back. Remember this? This is for you guys to differentiate inside and put it at the back. So x plus 3 differentiate, what will you guys get? I hope all of you guys answer me 1. Nothing on top 1, nothing in front 1. 1 times 1, 1. Power minus 1, no more x. And number differentiate is always 0. That's why I left a 1 there. So 1 times 3 is 3. Isn't it this is my 
du dx. So let me copy it down. 3x plus 3 square. So the 3 also I put bracket just in case it gets confused, okay? Plus, next one is u. u exactly is the purple color one. I just copy it back. And I also need dv dx at the back. How do I get dv dx? du dx is differentiate u. dv dx is differentiate your v. Let me write here for you. v is need the blue color one. And now what I need is dv dx. So how do I get dv dx? I would just need to differentiate this with the bracket on because the bracket, you guys couldn't expand it. So nothing in front is 1. 5, 1, 5. Power minus 1, 4. Correct? And the bracket inside always just copy back the same thing. Will you stop here? No. Why not? Because you guys will always add a small little bracket at the back for you guys to differentiate inside and put it at the back. So 4 minus 3x, if I differentiate it, what will I get? Hopefully you guys answer me correctly, negative 3. Because 4 differentiate is 0. This one, 1, right? Nothing that is 1. 1 times negative 3, negative 3. Power minus 1, no more x left. Isn't it? I still left negative 3 if I differentiate the inside at the back. Com combine those, you guys can combine. I get negative 15 for the front part. So this is what I get. Let me copy it down. Negative 15, 4 minus 3x, power 4. I think the moment I do until here, you guys get a very better, a very good idea of how do you guys do it. Quite easy, right? It's just follow the formula. Whatever they say they need, just sub accordingly. Just don't, you know, try to jump step. You get eventually you guys don't have any problem. Okay. Based on my past experience, normally until this stage, you guys will all totally understand it. Then the biggest problem based on my ex students, okay, is not the sub part, is the part start from this moment. So for you guys to understand it nicely, so I will, the first thing is I will rearrange it, even though it's very unnecessary, but I scared you guys don't understand. That's why let me rearrange it. What will I rearrange? Like for example, 2 times 3 and 3 times 2. Isn't it the answer is also 6, correct? So that's why I will purposely rearrange them until they can look like easier. So the first thing is, look at this whole line. Huh? I think 3 is the easiest one. I'll write the 3 in front. The 4 minus 3x power 5, I continue right down. The x plus 3 squared, I continue right down. Okay, I just try to rearrange it. Nothing fancy. Yeah? Then about the second line. The second line, I realized negative 15 is the, is the most simplest one. I'll write it in front. To matching with the first one. Huh? Okay, So after I write this, I'll write this one first. Obviously not matching also, never mind. But because I scared later on, you guys couldn't see it. So I want to make them match. Okay, like the sequence also match. Number first, they're only 4 minus 3x. 4 minus 3x, then the last one is x plus 3 cubed. Okay, now my dear, nothing fancy. This row uh, is like, unnecessary to write also, but I just write for you guys, okay? I just rearrange them until number 4 minus 3x and then x plus 3, correct? Let's start from now. How do you guys continue? Okay, do you guys realize until this moment, right? You guys couldn't expand it because they are like power 5, power 2. You guys couldn't expand it, right? There are a lot of them who thought that you will stop here. You won't stop here. Because this is not the simplest form. So how do you guys make it the simplest form then? Not sure whether you answer me correctly, but I think majority of you guys can answer me. Factorize. So my dear, what, what is factorize? Okay, factorize is actually pull out the similarity, the persamaan. Maybe I say like that, you don't understand? Give you one example. Very, very easy one. Let me give you a very complicated example. Like for example, 2A cube B square minus 4a square b. Okay, lah, for example, like that. So guys, the moment you guys look at this, uh, so just imagine if the question is like that. Can your a cube b square minus a square b? Cannot, right? Because they're totally two different thing, right? Then what you guys will do? You guys can actually factorize it. Since you guys couldn't combine, but you want the most simplest form, then you guys will choose to factorize. Factorize means pull out the persamaan. So I am 2, you are 4. 2 and 4, both number can divide by 2. Then I can pull out a 2. Okay, next one. A cube, I got 3A. A square, I got 2A. When I got 3, you got 2, we can pull out 2 of it because we can pull out the minimum of it because both of us can divide by A square. Next one, B square and B. B square, I got 2B. B, I got 1B. Here got two, here got one. Minimum, we can pull out one of it. 
So the leftover, I'll put inside the bracket. So can you guys tell me the front part? If I pull out 2A square B, what do I left in front? You know, right? When you pull out means you divide. If you don't know, you can ask yourself like that. You see, uh? 2 divided by 2 is what? 1. Okay? 1 unnecessary to write. Like, if there's other things, but I write for you guys, okay? Next one. A cubed. If I divide by A squared, 3A divided by 2A, cut, cut. I left 1A. B squared divided by B, 2 means divide. So 2B divided by 1B, cut, cut. I left 1B. Continue, minus. This minus, I put a circle. Uh, obviously, you need to put a circle, but I just, in case you guys don't understand it, okay? The back one, what do I left that? I repeat, 2 means divide. 4 divided by 2, I left 2. A squared divided by A squared, I left 1. No need to write because since I have a 2 there. B divided by B, isn't it? I also left 1. So that means if I write nicely, isn't it this is what I left after I factorize? For those who don't trust me, you guys can actually expand that and see whether you guys can get back the same thing. Let me show you. Uh, if I open back the bracket, 2 is 2. A squared times A is A cubed. B times B is B squared. Then this one, if I expand it, minus 2 times 2 is 4. A square B. Do you realize I open back this bracket? Do I get back whatever I started? Yes. So this is actually factorization. They are actually the same thing. It's just that instead of you just write them like that, you will pull out the similarity. So I hope you guys understand my example now. Then let's look back this one. So again, I repeat, you won't stop here because you guys will simplify it by factorize the similarity. So let's look. Uh. I'm 3, you are 15. 3 and 15, isn't it? Both of them can divide by 3. So I think I can pull out a 3. Next one. 4 minus 3x, I also have, you also have. You got power 5, I got power 4. You got 5, I got 4, isn't it? I can pull out 4 of them. I can pull out minimum of them because both of them can divide by 4 of them, right? Continue. x plus 3, I got 2 of it. x plus 3, I got 3 of it. When I got 2, you got 3, isn't it? We can pull out 2 of it. Minimum, obviously, is 2 of it. Okay? So this is what I decided to pull out. I make it this bigger. Hopefully, you guys won't confuse. The leftover, I use black pen to write, okay? Because uh, this one uh, is very confusing for students because they are way longer compared to whatever example I just gave you. This student always very confusing, but the concept is the same one. You guys just need to get the concept and practice more, okay? So the first bracket. So what do I left? 3, if I divide by 3, I get 1. 1 unnecessary to write, unless there's nothing else to write there. Then this one, 4 minus 3x, I got 5 of it. And then I pull out 4 of it. Isn't it I will left 1 of it? Obviously, no need to write bracket power 1 now, okay? But I still write for you guys just in case you, you, know, you couldn't imagine it. Then x plus 3, 2 of it. I pull out 2 of it. Isn't it left 1? Can minus, this minus no need to put bracket, but I just put bracket just in case you guys couldn't see it. Then the back part, continue, pull out means divide. 15 divided by 3, I will left 5. 4 minus 3x, I got 4 of it. I pull out 4 of it. So 4 of it, I divide 4 of it, I left 1. So no need to write at all. Okay, I left nothing, lah, so 1. So x plus 3, I got cube 3 of it. I pull out two of it. So three of it, if I pull out two of it, isn't it we still left x plus three power one? Can you understand what I say, right? Okay, I think can. I think can. I have, have faith on you, my dear, of understanding what is divide, okay? So now, let's try to write them nicely. So power one, unnecessary to continue write the bracket. So I'll just copy it down. This one, obviously, I can expand. Negative 5 times x, negative 5x, negative 5 times 3, negative 15. Will you stop like that? No. You just want your answer in the most simplest form. So those you guys can combine, you guys will combine them together. Like for example, 4 minus 15, negative 11. Negative 3x minus 5x, negative 8x. Can you see that? Maybe you will stop here. I totally can understand. But I will try my best to write the most simplest form of answer. So I scared it gets confused, my dear. I rearrange first. So those with power, I put it at the back, okay? Those without power, I put it in front, Ken. 
Nothing fancy. I just try to rearrange the sequence. Why would I do that? Obviously, I, I, I understand maybe you don't mind, but some school teacher might, so you better write in the most perfect, simplest form. How do you guys write in the most simplest form? Remember, remember. If you guys continue, can pull out something from the bracket, that means factorize something, you guys please factorize it, like 11 and 8. Please don't try to look at the rest. Uh. The rest got power 4, power 2. You guys couldn't continue pull out anything. But this one can, because this one only power 1, correct? And this one, negative 11 and 8. 11 and 8, can they divide by the same number? No. But both of them can divide by a negative because both of them got negative. So just imagine negative 11, you pull out negative, you left 11. Negative 8, you pull out negative, you left positive 8. Isn't it just like this? Then we get the answer. I think by now you understand why I say my student always very weak on here. Because you see, you look at it, my dear, the, the moment, now you feel like the mo the part that we sub num U, V, D, U, D, X, D, V, D, X is super easy. But the factorization part is harder, slightly harder. So you just need to be careful, practice more. You guys will totally understand it. And don't suspect the answer exactly look like this. Very long, but that is the answer. That Can understand? I think can. Let's go on with question four. So this question four, my dear, they want to find what f prime x. This thing, we call it prime. Huh? Maybe you were thinking, oh, teacher, what is prime? Okay, let me write down for you here. So based on my previous video, you guys all know, differentiate y, we will always call it dy, dx, correct? But they won't always ask you guys to differentiate y. Maybe sometimes they will ask you guys to differentiate fx. When you differentiate fx, you guys are very naive. One. You guys always tell me, oh, teacher, dfx, dx. That is what you think, but that is not a truth. So my dear, whenever you guys differentiate fx, which is the function, when we differentiate it, differentiate it, we don't call it dfx dx, we call it f prime x. And guys, prima is actually apostrophe. Okay, so next time in the future, if you guys see apostrophe f prime x, okay, we call it prime, okay? F prime x, they are actually under differentiation. Why I need to purposely emphasize this? Because in exam, they won't write f prime, they won't write, they won't tell you this is under differentiation. They will just say find f prime x. And some students will thought they are this one. I hope you guys realize they are two different things. So this one quite obvious is differentiation because this is what I'm teaching you now. Correct? So please remember a prosophy is differentiation. But this is not a prosophy. This one is power negative one. You know power negative one is what? You guys still remember they are actually under form 4, chapter 1, function, which is under inverse function. So there are two different chapters, okay? So don't confuse by yourself, okay, my dear? So the name is totally different now. One is apostrophe, one is power negative one, okay? So let's look at A now. A now, they want me to find F prime X. So F prime X, that means I should differentiate this. So based on what I teach you guys today, whenever you want to differentiate, you guys will check how many X they have. So when I look at A, I realize I have two X. One on top, one at the bottom. Isn't it? I got two X, correct? One on top, one at the bottom. What is their relation now? Divide. Can you see it? So whenever they are plus minus, normal method. Times divide should use the formula, correct? Some students will tell me, teacher, isn't it in the previous video, you thought that the bottom can split? Guys, don't tell me you want to split. I hope you guys understand. You can only split when your denominator is alone. Not when your denominator got plus minus. So denominator got plus minus cannot split my idea, okay? So this question, actually, I cannot even use my normal method. I need to use the formula. So this is divide. Divide, you guys will use the quadrant formula. Let me write down for you guys. V du dx minus u dv dx over v square. So I need to use this formula uh, and I repeat. Uh, don't tell me, teacher, but this one will find f prime x. This is just a name. Like when you guys call it y, you guys can call it fx. So you guys call it dy dx, you guys can also call it f prime x. So they are totally the same thing. Yeah? So now when I want to differentiate the fx, right, we won't call it dy dx anymore. We will call it f prime x. And very easy, follow the formula sub accordingly. So based on the formula, the first thing is v. So which one is V, my dear? Based on my formula, U over V, U over V. The top is always the U. The bottom is always the V. So my V is the blue color one. 
isn't it? 2x minus 5. Done. Okay. Next one, I need du dx. What is du dx? Differentiate your u. Your, my, my u is actually x squared. So x squared, if I differentiate it, what do I left? Nothing in front, 1. 2 times 1, 2. Power minus 1, 1. Okay. My du dx is 2x. Again, that minus u. u, isn't it, the purple color one, which is x squared. And then times dv dx. Which one is dv dx? dv dx is an in differentiate of v. My v is the blue color one, which is 2x minus 5. So if I differentiate this, I will get nothing on top. 1. 1 times 2, 2. Power minus 1, no more x. And number differentiate is always 0. Isn't it? I exactly get just a single 2. Please don't forget this formula got over. Over v squared. So v is the blue color one. So my blue color one is 2x minus 5. But remember the formula tell me is v squared. So your v put a bracket, add a square. Quite easy, right? Just follow the formula. They need what? Just sub accordingly, right? And start from now on, the rest is just mathematics again. So until here, some very minor, but some student will ask me, teacher, can I cut? Can you cut? No. Why cannot? Because my dear, let me ask you, whenever 2 minus A over A, do you, do you ever cut your A? No. Why cannot cut? Because whenever they have got plus minus, obviously cannot cut. So please don't tell me you guys want to cut them, okay? So you guys cannot cut them, then what will you guys do? Maybe you will tell me you want to factorize, but this time they not really have much similarity. So instead of factorize, why don't we just expand it? 2 times 2, 4. x times x, x squared. 2x times negative 5, negative 10x. This one also I expand, negative 2x squared. Isn't it the denominator? No need to expand one. Uh, the denominator can continue right with a bracket because it's the most simplest form. So 4x squared minus 2x squared, I left 2x squared minus 10x and the denominator still the same. Can you guys see how nice it is? Just like that. Again, I repeat, you might stop here, but I won't because if they can continue simplify, I will simplify. So what can I continue simplify? Quite obvious, bottom, nothing to do. Bottom is already in the simplest bracket form, but the top. The top, what can I do? We can factorize the similarity. So 2 and 10, both of them can divide by 2. So I can take out 2. Here is x squared, here is x. I got 2x, you got 1x. Isn't it minimum? We can pull out one of the x. Let's see what we left here. Again, I use black pen. Huh? So this part, when I put it out, 2 divided by 2, 1. So no more 2, okay? 2 divided by 2, no more. x squared divided by 1x. Isn't it we left 1x here? So the minus, I still write here, minus. You don't need to put a circle, the minus. You don't need to circle the minus, okay? I just, in case you guys couldn't see the, the, the minus. That's why I put a symbol like that. So 10 divided by 2. This part, yeah. 10, if I divide by 2, isn't it? I will left 5. x power 1, if I divide by x power 1, nothing left. Ta -da! Isn't it just like that? This will be my answer for A. Understand? Okay, I think can. Let's go on B. I must have faith on myself. So my dear B. B, they want to differentiate this fx again. So again, I repeat, whenever they want to differentiate, please check how many x they have. When I look at it, I realize there's two x. One on top, one at the bottom. One on top, one at the bottom, isn't it a divide relation? So divide, please don't tell me you want to use the normal method to do it. You guys must use the u over v formula. For divide, using u over v. For times, using uv. So yep, this is the formula. Let's again start to do it. So now when you differentiate it, you don't call it dy dx anymore because they call it fx. So fx differentiate, we will call it f prime x. Okay, let's start to differentiate. The first thing is we must have v. So u, v, u, v. And now it's divide. So it's u over v. So isn't it the v is the bottom one. So just copy the whole thing down. 3x squared plus 1 squared. Next, I need du dx. Du dx is differentiate of u. 
So my u is actually 2 minus 7x. So, it, so if I differentiate it, what will I left? Very good. Negative 7. 2 differentiate is 0. 1 times negative 7, negative 7. Power minus 1, no more x. That's why I left negative 7. Minus u. U is the original purple color one. Put a bracket for it. 2 minus 7x. N times dv dx. How do I get dv dx? Differentiate my v. So u, v, u, v. My v isn't it the blue color one? 3x squared plus 1 squared. Saw it? Again, let's differentiate it. Now they come with a bracket. Uh, differentiate with just times and minus 1. Nothing in front. 1. 2 times 1, 2. Bracket power minus 1, 1. Inside the bracket, we will just copy back the same thing. Can you see that? So we just times minus 1, times minus 1. Please don't stop here. Remember, you should add on a small bracket at the back for you guys to differentiate inside and put at the back. Please don't forget this step, okay? So 3x squared plus 1, if I differentiate it internally, what will I get? Not sure whether you answered me correctly, but I think so. So my dear, 2 times 3, 6. Power minus 1, 1x. Number differentiate is always zero. Isn't it this part? You guys will get 6x. So 6 times 2, 12x bracket, 3x squared plus 1 power 1. I don't think power 1 is necessary to write. So guys, I just copy back whatever I get here. Okay? Don't forget over v squared. So v is what? v is the blue color one. So my v is in it 3x squared plus 1 squared. Hey guys. Is there any problem with whatever I did so far? I hope you tell me yes. You know what is a problem now? Students always make this mistake because they just, you know, forget. They feel like, oh, teacher, this one V squared, correct, my dear. I hope you realize that the V itself already comes with a square. Yet my formula is V squared. So my V itself got square is their problem. But my formula needs V squared. So isn't it my V got square? At the outside of it, you must also have a square because the formula is V square. So the V is the inside one. The square, you must still add on. That's why I'm using different colors so that you guys can see the red color one is the V square, okay? So now, I think all of you guys understand I do this part because it's quite easy. Just follow the formula. So until now, I write nicely a bit. I won't open the bracket because, because, because later on, simplify is easier. So negative 7 is the easiest. I will write them on the starting. 12x, I think, is the easiest. I will rearrange it and write the 12x on the starting part. And the bottom one, you guys learned under indices before. Power 2, you power 2 again. It will become power 2 times 2, 4. Can I? So guys, until here, I make it this big. Mm, that you guys all can see it. You guys can focus on here. So guys, until here, how do I continue? Why I stop here? No, I repeat again. Huh? Can simplify, must simplify. What is simplify? Pull out the similarity. So first, 7 and 12, can they divide by the same number? I don't think so. So that one I couldn't pull. I think the only thing I can pull, okay, by the way, 2 minus 7x also I cannot pull because this part itself don't have 2 minus 7x. So what is the thing that both of them also have? x 3x squared plus 1. Can you see it? I got 2 of it. You have only 1 of it. So when I got 2, you got 1. Isn't it? We can pull out minimum 1 of it. So guys, the leftover, again, I use black pen. Now. Obviously, you need to change pen, okay? It's just me as a teacher. I scared you guys cannot see whatever I write. That's why I, you know, I keep changing color, okay? So the front part. Do we ever suck, pull out the negative 7? No. So the negative 7, still there. 3x squared plus 1 squared, I only pull out one of it. I got two of it, I divide by one of it. Pull out means divide. Eh? So isn't it we still have one of this? So it minus, minus is here. Eh? How about the back part? So 12x, I never pull out 12x. Obviously, my 12x is still there. 2 minus 7x, I never pull out 2 minus 7x. Obviously, they are still there. And 3x squared plus 1, if I divide by 3x squared plus 1, isn't it no more 3x squared plus 1? Uh, 
don't because too troublesome and forget the bottom part. Uh, the bottom part obviously is always there. So by now, we can just expand it and get the answer. Negative 7 times this, negative 21 x squared. Negative 7 times 1, negative 7. Negative 12 x times 2, negative 24 x. Negative 12 times negative 7, negative, negative, positive. 12 times 7, do you guys get 84? x times x is in the x square. And my denominator remain unchanged. Not sure whether you guys all realize, but this time I realize I can cut. Why I can cut? I repeat again. Huh? A plus B over A, you guys cannot cut because there is a plus minus. But if one day they don't have plus minus, they are times divide relation. Then can you guys are allowed to cut? Yes. So exactly is the case for now. So do you guys realize that this bracket and this bracket, they are time state relation. Since they are time relation, then I realize I have one of it. You have four of it. Isn't it? We can cut, cut, and only left three of it at the bottom. Can I? So please just need to look at it, whether they got plus minus. Because after you guys factorize, they don't have plus minus anymore in the external part. That's why you guys are allowed to cut if you guys can cut lah. So what do I left on top? Negative 21 plus 84. Negative 21 plus 84. Isn't it guys will get 63x squared. Minus 7 minus 24x. And my denominator only left power 3. So it, remember, if can continue simplified, simplified. But 63, 7 and 24, I don't think all of them can divide by the same number. You guys can try. 24 divided by 7 is some decimal. So not I don't want to continue differentiate. Uh, not I don't want to continue simplify it, but I couldn't. Just like that, done. Hopefully after this video, you guys all understand when to use the UV and the UOV formula. Because the mind map will actually help you to know when is the time. Because a lot of students, they just, they just don't understand when. So I hope after this, you guys will understand. Mm, that's all for today. Please comment and let me know whether you understand. Because I feel... I don't know why, but I lack of confidence. <laughs> I don't know, okay? Hopefully it helps. See you guys on the next video. Annyeong. Ta-ta.